In the early years, Ghana made a massive push and invested in its human resources around technology. Um, and we, we have had some blips along the way, but 60 years on, I think we're at that point where we're benefiting. Technology development is quite slow. I remember as far back as 95. Well, in a sense, I'll say there was no tech industry really then. It was a dream Nkrumah had. And his, his, uh, his dream was cut short in 1966. Today, a lot of us see ourselves as children of that dream. Uh, the Ghana tech scene in the early 90s, few players, very tedious. The work was very hard, there was no internet. Everything was on diskettes and disks and there were no laptops. The earliest memories of technology in Ghana must have been 1999, the cusp of Y2K. Initially, communication where people, where people go to make phone calls and then they be, then became cybercam because they had the computer and internet. And that's how um, I first got access to the computer. Lots of interesting stories about having to drive seven hours to Bensu or Bogosu to fix a small problem in a, a software product that we left behind and it was discovered 10 hours after we had left and we'll have to drive back because there's no internet to send the correction. I remember in 97, 98, it was mostly dial-ups, you know, you have to dial this modem and make some noise and then it was mostly small ISPs. Fast forward, we moved from that to busy internet that we built in 2001 that became a high-speed uh, technology hub. We've seen the convergence of, of three or four main revolutions happen over a period of time. The first was the computing revolution. Then was the connectivity revolution, so uh, bandwidth becoming more available. Then there was the um, mobile revolution, which is the pervasiveness of, of, of computing devices. Um, and then more recently, there's a commerce revolution, so the introduction of payment systems, mobile money, and how that's impacting things like e-commerce and mobile commerce. I actually believe that busy internet and that whole technology ecosystem we created actually became the second chapter in the technology evolution in Ghana. It's quite intriguing for people to um, see you go to work every day and say that you do something with just technology. People are used to brick and mortar, so they want to see you work and be paid by um, a substantial, tangible thing, not with software. I mean, back in the day, if you said you were going to make a, a career out of being a programmer or, um, or in technology, I mean, everyone just sort of looked at you as, oh, this poor guy is destined for poverty um, and is just wasting his time. You know, because Ghana has been through all these coups and we've been forced to go and live in all parts of the world and we face all manner of difficulties, it has left us with a lot of uh, innovative capacity. And some of the most stable countries in Africa haven't had that, so they are very by the book. I mean, for countries who potentially even have better bandwidth than us, like um, like Nigeria. They have a huge power problem, which just sort of negates um, the value of, of having connectivity in the first place, because you barely have any electricity or energy. Um, so in the, in the broader context of Africa, I think Ghana's technology infrastructure is, is, is up there. It, it, I'd put it in the top, top three. If we take, for example, an enabling poverty environment, and an environment for innovation, I think Ghana is really ahead. We've seen very interesting innovations coming out of Ghana. I think we are tops. I, mean, I would dare say number one, number two in Africa. It's us. We just haven't been given the opportunity. Technology with ideology, I believe, is what delivers the punch. The African pride, the fact of us knowing that we are capable of any technology that anyone else is capable of, these are the kinds of things that motivate us to keep pushing. I believe that we have a lot of innovation that could come out if we can create the environment and if there can be a better supply of early stage capital to back this entrepreneur. Um, I've seen more and more people investing in entrepreneurs. We have the Meltwater Entrepreneurial School that has been grooming a lot of entrepreneurs and through the foundation funding their initial uh, businesses. So that's really, really good and we need more of that. 
So let's enable our young people, whether it's a career choice or it's just as a user, let's make technology an everyday occurrence for them that at a very young age they embrace it, they think it's just a way of life, it's just the way we live in Ghana. So I'd say catch them young. So I, it's something that has to come with our culture where parents will understand that um, technology is what is the next thing, the next big thing. So when your child starts doing things with it, you allow him to go and eventually it might turn out to be good. I think it's a, it's a personal challenge and a collective responsibility. Um, I think we need to bring in technology, um, we need to prepare a younger generation for the challenges of a fast changing world. I think Nkrumah's dream is becoming a reality. The young people now are more engaged in technology than maybe the older people like us because they're now mobile phones, they're affordable and more people can, can, can participate in the technology space. Let's create businesses that build on a base of technology that drive our economic growth because we're able to serve not only our people, but people um, at least on the continent, if not around the world. So yes, let's make technology a key strand of our development.